um, derivatives, uh, high income uh, people other than use them as drivers, but even then, I mean, you can use someone less reckless as a driver. So I don't know what to use them for. Uh, honestly, I don't know what, what is the, the, I was on Wall Street for 21 years, right? And I, there are a lot of people I wouldn't use for anything. I don't know if uh, you have some suggestions. So I don't know what you're competing against, all right? And you have high unemployment on Wall Street. And, and calling uh, that talent is a real, um, it's a very strange use of language. Uh, people who lost 4.3 trillion worldwide in a profession, um, and then calling it talent. So there's talent in generating bonuses, definitely, that you cannot deny. But other than that, I don't know. There's, uh, you know, just uh, on this point, there are people who are not merely talented, but gifted in areas like medicine, in physics, in other fields, and they seem to get by on some amount of money, 200,000, half a million, a million. I, I don't know that the talent in Wall Street is so stellar that it's worth 50 or 100 million versus the talent in these other fields. The issue with the talent more is the structure of Wall Street somehow allows that level of compensation. So if one firm does not allow it, uh, people can move to another firm that does. But if the, there's a leveling of the field overall, so that instead of 20 million people are making one or two, you know, then then I think this issue of oh, you know, we'll lose our talent disappears. It, it has to be done in a uniform way, as opposed to uh, affecting just one firm versus another. Thank you, uh, Dr. Chaleb. Did you yeah, want to respond? Uh, to yeah, that? I have one comment. Uh, he's making a socialistic argument to limit bonuses. I'm making a capitalistic argument to limit bonuses. I'm saying if people want to pay each other, they, they can pay each other whatever they want. I just don't want society to subsidize bonus. That's it. I, I'm making the opposite argument coming from, so this is an extreme bipartisan conclusion here, where- uh, We have a know, few of those here. If people, if, if people want to take risk, with, you know, and, and two adults can, 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 uh, can hurt each other financially as much as they want. The problem is, as a taxpayer, okay, I don't want these bonuses. Thank you. Thank you both. Mr. Chairman, just uh, a comment, if I could. Sure. Um, it just seems that we have to try to find a way to legislate maybe some character to Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. I misread the note uh, that said that we would shortly have 40 minutes of votes. We will have votes at around 11.45, and they will last 40 minutes. So I'm delighted that we will be able to continue with this panel for Mr. Grayson and for a second round of, of questioning. Uh, Mr. Grayson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're, we're talking today about what proper incentive structures we should have on Wall Street. And I'm wondering if we're talking too much about carrots and not enough about sticks. In fact, people on Wall Street did lose over $4 trillion of our money, and I've seen almost no one punished for it. Don't you think that it would be likely to deter bad behavior and over, uh, an over, uh, fun, overly fond view of risks if we actually punished people? I, I'm not a legal scholar, but, uh, but uh, there's got to be a way to, there's something called malpractice. Okay, there's got to there got to be a way where we can go up after these people. I haven't seen so far because people are scared of, of uh, because Wall Street has talents that so these people would run away would go to Monte Carlo or something. So we're afraid of getting them, you know, uh, of, of of them running away. But we should be starting. We should be doing it immediately. Find people who made uh, like a chairman of an executive committee of a, of a firm that we had to support who made 120 million dollars of bonuses and supervised unfettered risk taking and make sure that the gentleman returns 120 million dollars of bonuses one single uh, 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 the place where my idea was most popular was switzerland there's the first event of a clawback in any country took place in switzerland where the authorities went to Mr. Marcel Ospel, head of UBS, after the events of October, and told him, listen, give us 12 million Swiss francs, please. And it was voluntary, and he gave back uh, uh, almost a, a large share of his opus. He clawed back his, his bonuses. But it, it was voluntary only because the government intervenes by limiting people's liability. The concept of liability is determined by our law, not by the free market. In fact, if, if we were to say that we will not give people the right to hide behind corporate shields, wouldn't that have a dramatic effect on holding the people accountable for the, mad, the bad decisions that they make? Um, I, I uh, if, is this to me or? 
I, to answer, okay, it's still the same problem, but fooled by randomness or not fooled by randomness. Some people I've seen in Chicago, and it was a pit trader, trade their own money and lose a huge amount of money, not knowing they, they could lose it. So someone whose net worth is $2 million, lose $2 million and, and have to go uh, burn his house or to collect uh, insurance money. So I've seen that. It's not just, it wouldn't just deter. So people sometimes engage in crazy trades, okay, where they have liability themselves. So it may not be sufficient, but it would be, for me, economically, a, a good way to have a bonus compensated by malice, because capitalism is not just about incentives, it's about punishment. Well, when you say it wouldn't be sufficient, all you're really saying is that it wouldn't solve the problem for all time, forever, in every case, but it would certainly be a step in the right direction. Oh, it would be imperative, not step. Uh, imp imperative. It's imperative. It's an imperative. Okay. Now, D Dr. Bookstaber, I understand that in Sweden, uh, the bank managers have unlimited liability for the mistakes that they make. What would happen in our system with regard to blow-ups, with regard yeah. to crazy risks that people take in order to pad their own pockets, what effect would that have if we were to take that law and introduce it in America? Yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, something along those lines that I've uh, advocated is to have the potential of penalties for the risk managers within a firm, similar to what are there for the CFO of a firm. Uh, you know, if a CFO knowingly uh, allows uh, some accounting statement to go out where he knows it's incorrect, he's on the hook, not just from a civil, but from a criminal standpoint. If you had uh, the risk managers have to sign on the dotted line that the, the risk that they have executed their function correctly and all material risks have been duly represented, uh, I think that could go a long way towards uh, solving the problem because they would then have an incentive to make sure everything's right. And there are cases, uh, I think, as we go back to this last crisis, where the risk managers were in some sense not up to the task or possibly in bed with the people who were involved in training or with senior management to where they were willing to have their views overridden. Uh, because they had no liability on the other hand, on the one side, and they didn't want to get fired on the other. But don't we have to do more than that? Don't we have to not only say to people, you have to fill out these forms properly and you have to disclose, we also have to actually hold people accountable for the mistakes that they make and hold them personally accountable? Isn't that what we need to actually deter this kind of misconduct? But I guess the question of what type of mistake, because everybody makes certain types of mistakes. I think that sort of mistake where you can hold people accountable is where they, obviously it's not a mistake if they knowingly misrepresent, but where there's something material that they, uh, on the lines of malpractice, where you say, you know, somebody doing this job in a reasonable way should have discovered that. But let's talk about the specific problems we've seen time and time again for the last few years. Let's talk about, for instance, AIG. In AIG, the fundamental problem is that the traders entered into literally billions upon billions of dollars of heads I win, tails you lose bets. Bets that couldn't possibly be made good on by anybody but the U.S. government. Now that wasn't a part of, that, that wasn't a problem of them not filling out the form properly, not disclosing. Don't those people need to be punished in order to deter that conduct in the future? Well, this gets to Mr. Taleb's point that you have to, you would have to go into the mindset of the people. Was it, a, a, as he's saying, fooled by, you know, was crooks it, or fools? Yeah, was it, were they crooks or fools? Uh, if you can discern one from the other, then I agree with you. But uh, what I'm saying is you could also go one level higher to, to require, which now is required, risk management oversight for those functions where it's believed to be credible and these are supposed to be people who know how to do their job and they have the responsibility to represent that this type of uh, event is not occurring. Dr. Slab. Yes, well, the, the problem I saw uh, and I wrote about, uh, actually, my, in, 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 in one of my writings, not yet published, I say it's easier to fool a million than fool a person. And it's much easier to fool people with, uh, with uh, billions than to fool them with millions. Uh, why? Because you have bandwagon effects and you have uh, collective, something called diffusion and collective responsibility. And, and I'll tell you this, uh, exactly why. If you have uh, uh, what risk managers are doing is make sure they do exactly what other risk managers do. So if there is a mistake, it's a mistake that they did not commit individually, but committed that they had company on, on that, uh, we call it company on a trade. 
You, you, it's not like an individual doctor who's just incompetent. It's collective incompetence. We had collective risk management incompetence, but they were all doing what other people. The hedge is to do what the other guy's doing, and that I don't know if you're uh, you're uh, you know. If, uh, well, the note I got earlier was incorrect, and now it appears we are going to have votes at any moment. So I'll start a round of questions, and we'll try to keep it. I, I know that everybody would like to ask questions to this panel. Um, just one. <laughs> Uh, it's not clear to me whether you have actually supported a legal requirement that there be clawback provisions in um, in bonus contracts. That if a bonus uh, is based upon a profit this year, but the very same transaction results in a loss in two or three years, that there be a, a requirement, a legal requirement, that that bonus be repaid. Uh, Dr. Tlaib. Uh, uh, indeed. You do, you indeed. Do indeed.